Speaking of catchers, um, Henry Davis had a pretty good week last week uh, on there. Um, Ten hits, three doubles, home run, eight RBIs. He in July he's he's been he's been pretty good in July. He's not really walking at all. Um, he's like a one forty five WRC plus in July. Just I mean he's it's looking it's looking pretty good. Right, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to Mr. Devin in a minute. But uh, <laughs> oh, do we have to? no, we don't have. To. I mean, we don't have to do that. I mean, he <laughs> he led the system in hits. I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, so That's Henry Davis, Henry Davis, yeah, yeah. I mean, looking at it here, um, four multi-hit games this week for Davis mm-hmm. out of his five starts: um, doubles, homer. I think his OPS is nine ninety nine right now in in uh, in Indy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, he's looking at art. What are you seeing from like a from like a strikeout standpoint? Because I mean, obviously, that was his big issue. Um, specifically with velocity, because like the numbers, we all know Henry Davis can mash triple A pitching. Like he's he's shown it over and over and over again. The problem has been once he gets to the majors, he's having problem, you know, really hitting that 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 elite type fastball. So just from watching him, are you seeing anything really different from him, or is he just he's just beating up on worse pitching? What what's it look like? Part of me wants to just say it's just like beating up on the the worst pitching right now. It's it's kind of at the point now to where it's like I'll tune in and I want to see Henry Davis hit a ball, hit a couple balls and stuff like that. And like, okay, well, he's doing what kind of need him to do here. At this point, it's kind of like I just kind of want to see him do it in the majors now. There's there's nothing that re- he's really going to do down in AAA that's going to be like, okay, he, he, he he's fixed now. It's It's time to move him up. It's really just – his issue is hitting major league pitching and until he's up here to hit the major league pitching. And like, I've seen some stuff and I've heard some people say to you like the, obviously going from triple H to the majors, there's going to be a, a pretty good step there, but the, the step from triple A pitching to major league pitching this year is even further than, than what it is in, in years before. So like, it's, it's nice to see him hit. It's obviously, it could be worse, and he could be not hitting major or the AAA pitching. Leo but also, until he does it, yeah, until he does it in the majors, it's kind of like, okay, well, it's more of okay. He he's doing what he's supposed to do at this point, and we'll, we'll kind of see. But he is hitting well. Yeah. So, so you say he's had a lot of doubles, right? Uh, he hit three last week. Has he had a situation where he was on second, the ball was hit to the shortstop, and he just ran at third? Like, just from rip, just ran right to third base, just never turned around and looked? I mean, no stopping none him. That I, none none that, that sticks out to me. Right, uh, so right get him that. in there above Yasmani Grandal. I'm ready. I mean, I mean, at this point, at this point, like, if, if I'm going to have a catcher go up and – have like a, a 50 to 60 WRC plus in the majors. I'd rather it be my former first overall pick than, than the catcher that you signed in the off season. That's, that's just me. Um, Cause then at this point, at, at that point you give them the last couple months. And if it's like really bad, then you, you just know at that point it's time to plan accordingly and, and look elsewhere. And, but then if you kind of see something like, OK, well, maybe it didn't look great, but I, we saw a couple things here that we, we think we could work with now. You can kind of include him in, in, in the plans kind of kind of thing going forward. But I mean, that's kind of hard to, to say because like you're competing for a wild card spot. It, it, it'd be kind of weird to like just willingly sacrifice a roster spot at that at that point. Potentially, but also if you're getting the same production from from the other guy, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone. You're you're kind of still getting the same production now, and you can be solving something for the future, kind of thing too. So. Right. Yeah, I um, I mean, if it were up to me, Davis would be up here because I think what you just said there before hits it where. Like we all know, Henry Davis can hit AAA pitching. What he needs to learn how to do is hit major league pitching. Mm-hmm. And and as as much as he struggled this year, 
his his offensive numbers are still better than Yasmani Grandal's. Um, so really, it's just a matter of like, can he can he handle the staff? And I think he showed us while he was up there, like he's fully capable of doing that. Um, I mean, we've seen Grandal make terrible errors, um, both mental and physical, behind the plate. So, like, why not at this point? Like you said, like let's let's have the first overall pick try to figure it out as opposed to the 36 year old who is at the very end of his career right um but uh, i'm i mean i agree with everything you said there i think how has his defense looked in indy anything stand out there at all i mean it's like I, i've never been one to that was like really high on his his defense as as is so i mean it's it's kind of just i think the biggest thing with 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 him, it's like just trying to find a way to get his arm to translate better. Cause like, obviously he has a really strong arm. It's just, he's thrown out over his career, like 15% of base dealers in, in the minors, which doesn't make sense for someone who has a 70 grade arm at that, at that point. So, mm-hmm. and um, at, at, at that point I have like, fine tuning catcher mechanics behind the plates, a little above my pay grade at that, at that point, um, but it's just it's just something that just doesn't click in with the exchange and and, and whatnot. And so, yeah, haven't noticed anything to where it's like that's kind of been like further feed the case of like, well, see, this is why he shouldn't be a catcher. But but also, I don't I don't feel like I've seen any in, improvements at this point. He's they've kind of like cut his rollback a, a, a little bit. Um, I think mainly because of age, try to keep the innings in check. But um, Al- Alessandro Ercolani is a guy that, that, like on Bucks on Deck, we were really high on coming into the season. He had a really rough May. May he had like a he had one game to where he just kind of got blown up, and he kind of they had to make him eat a couple extra innings because you know to make sure they could get through the the game. So ERA skyrocketed. Um, he had like a, a ERA over ten in May. Since then, since June first, you know, Tornado's favorite day. Um, he has a <laughs> he has a 193 ERA, um, four strikeouts over three innings. Uh, his last time last week, it's just been ever since then. They've kind of, like I said, cut his roll back a little bit. Um, since June, he has a, a 34.1 strikeout rate. It's kind of a guy. Uh, another one of like the like data darlings kind of things. Like uh, Baseball America every week has like a like their Robo Scout like standings that they do with like some of the top pitchers he's he's been like in the top 10 in high a like all all year so like analytically he's a very solid pitcher and stuff like that he's another young guy for high a he didn't turn 20 until the season started um like i said they've kind of cut his innings back a little bit to have him working out of the bullpen bullpen but like multi-ending kind of kind of stuff so it wouldn't surprise me by the end of the year, maybe they kind of shift him back into rotation, kind of start giving him a little more innings. I think this year is kind of about managing the workload at this point, but very solid pitcher. He's, he's just looked very good since that, that couple of rough, rough outings in, in May. Yeah, I think, I think Ercolani got on everybody's radar last year when surprisingly he was an Arizona Fall League guy yeah, at age 19. Absolutely. He didn't really get a lot of work in there. He only pitched in four games, three and two thirds innings. But you know, you're facing really, really good competition there. Mm-hmm. And for somebody who only pitched in Bradenton last year, that was that was kind of a surprise for me. So, yeah, it seems like he's put together a pretty solid season at, at Greensboro. High A guy. Um, I mean, the, kind of an interesting story. Like he's from San Marino. I don't know. I don't know if there's ever been a major league baseball player from San Marino. So, you know, yeah. it, it's just kind of, uh, I mean, I'm, if you're, if you're familiar with San Marino, this, it's like a little, it's a town like in, you know, surrounded by Italy. So, uh, it's, uh, that's yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, who, well, who else we got pitching wise going down all the way to the, uh, the complex league, the, the complex team is in the, uh, the championship this, this week. Or, or the next couple of days, they played game one yesterday. Um, Carlos Castillo pitched in game one of the the FCL championship, six innings, one run baseball. Um, he pitched earlier in the week too, kind of like a, a key. So o- over the week, this eighteen year old kid 
last week through nine innings, two earned runs, seven strikeouts. He's had a um like the the season stats, the the playoff, the six innings that he pitched on Sunday won't go towards like his season stats. They don't count like the the complex league stuff or the playoff stuff. Um, but a two eight two eighty six ERA and thirty four and two thirds innings this year. Um, he was a guy that I got to see when I went down to to Bradenton, and like he really stood out to me. Um, kind of kind of gave like a like a Xander Meath light type of vibe, just because of like the lower arm slot, um, low to mid nineties, um, a lot of horizontal movement on the the fastball because of the arm slot. Just a lot of it's a lot of uncomfortable at bats. He, he's very, very raw kind of, kind of thing. Um, sometimes struggles to like put batters away. Like you can see that in like the strikeout rates a little bit low this year, but he has really good stuff. And, and like the, the more experience he gets with it, I, I really feel like he, he's like a very under the radar kind of guy to, to watch going forward. And he, he closed out the season really, really good for, for the complex team. Yeah, it's a guy who really hadn't been on my radar at all. Fangrass has him in the top 30. So, you know, they, mm-hmm. they, they like him. But yeah, strikeout number is not super high. Um, but yeah, overall, his numbers, he, he put up good numbers in the DSL last year. This year being his first year, you know, stateside seems to be, be doing, doing well as well. So yeah, just another. Name to put on on your radar. If there's one thing this team has shown that they can do is 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 work with pitching prospects. So, uh, yeah, so maybe maybe another guy to just keep an eye on as he progresses through the system. I do think he's a guy that may like. Normally, I'd probably say that like he's probably done for the year, but he he's actually thrown less inning, a couple less innings than he did last year in, in the Dominican. So maybe he's someone that you could say that um, you could slap up to Bradenton for a game or two or something like that. And Bradenton needs pitching. Bradenton needs like pitching like really bad right now. So yeah. game two's later today. Um, if there's a game three, would be on Tuesday. So Tuesday at the latest, the complex season goes. So they'll have to start getting some guys up there to to help out. I'd imagine. Okay. So complex league playoffs going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, the Pirates could win it today. Is that right? No, they lost. They end up losing game oh, one. Okay, they lost. Um, game yeah. One. So, all right. Yeah. So they got to win today. They got to win tomorrow. Today, win tomorrow. Okay. And those games, uh, there's, there's sometimes they get streamed on YouTube, so you may even be able to see those later. The, later. The next today. two, the next two should, because I believe they're doing the next two in Pirate City. Like game okay. two and three should be in Pirate Pirate City. So yeah, cool, cool. I think we found another complex team that did it too, but the Pirates like never play them, so it, it like it didn't matter. So. Gotcha. Cool. All right. Well, Murphy, we appreciate you coming on here. Um, thank you for getting up early and, uh, and, yeah, no and letting us know who, who did well last week. Uh, you can find Murphy and all of his, uh, his stuff. He's got a great, great sub stack bucks on deck. Uh, follow him on Twitter underscore Murphy 88, I think. Right. And then um, Tuesday po- uh, podcast with him and Nola uh so if you if you want more prospect talk we only have so much time to talk about prospects on this show but him and nola go go real deep into that uh every tuesday so check that out as well bucks on deck podcast